Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's bonus video. Here in Australia, it's getting close to the end of the preparing for school season. I went out shopping at the weekend and I went into Kmart, which is like a really large variety type store, and they had some notepads. When I saw the prices of these notepads, I thought, do you know, I've got to get them to give them a try. The notepads I've got, this first one is an A5 notebook. I am recycled. Lined paper. I'm not going to tell you much it is, we'll come back to that in a second. The next one, this is a 48 page 9x7 exercise book. Again, lined paper. We've then got a 96 page. Let's swap quick. We've then got a 64 page A4 binder book. Again, lined. And then we've got a 96 page A4. If I can get this on, here we go. 96 page A4 graph binder book. And there, we've got graph paper. So what I've done, I've written in each of these pads using a variety of fountain pens. So it's taken up two pages in each of them. And I thought we'd take a quick look at how well these papers have performed. Now, to start with, I've got my endless recorder notebook. 68 GSM Tomoe River paper. This is, I thought, a really good paper to use as my, like, control so this is using really nice paper so the pens that i've used i've used these same pens on each of them in the same order so first i've got a waterman karen 18 karat gold nib this is a medium nib it's got diamine writer's blood and then what i'm doing is I'm writing a sentence so i'm writing my grumpy wizards then with these swipes i'm doing a hash then immediately swiping then I do a hash, leave it for about 30 seconds, and then swipe. So we get a rough idea how well the paper dries. So here we are with the Waterman Karen, you know, fairly dark. And we're seeing, you know, even at 30 seconds, we're still slightly wet. The second pen I tried, this was the Twisby VAC 700R. This is with diamine spiced apple. So I picked this because it's a shimmer ink. It's also an ink I really like. So we've got this really nice, gorgeous red colour. But then we should be able to see loads of gold shimmer in there. Hopefully that's coming through. Not shimmer, is it? That should be fired, you know. It's a sheen, isn't it? But anyway, it's gorgeous. It's really nice. We see loads on this paper. Pen number three, Hondian N7. This is a fine nib. That VAT 700, as you can tell, was abroad. First Chinese pen that we've got in this test very fine line writes really nicely though not sure if there's anything coming through on there not expecting much it's just a nice interesting green ink again now this one at 30 seconds was dry whereas that twisby one that was still slightly wet i know there's a lot to remember isn't it fourth pen pen bbs 323 this is an extra fine nib Dominant Industry Lungo. I thought, yeah, it's a nice brown ink. It's a nice brown pen. Good one to test against. So again, did the exact same tests. Here I messed up a bit, so I had to redo that first swipe. There we go. I do think with this ink on here, I think I do see a bit of green sheen. Not a lot, but a bit. Right, the next pen. Bennu Talisman. Broad nib. Diamine best wishes. This should be certainly a sheening and there should be some shimmer. Now, I find it difficult to see. Let me see if I can get my head closer. Certainly there on the talisman, you can see a lot of red there, sheen. And I think you can see that on quite a few of the other words. So that was the fountain pen. So then I thought, let's try some other pens. So. I went for an outline, fine liner, so it's a fine one. Again, I did my sentence. Pointless doing that 30 second swipe, but I still did the immediate. I then used a Bic Biro. This is a black Biro. I'm not sure if it's fine on medium, so I didn't put that. It's just a Biro that I've got laying around. I will be honest, my 26 year old son describes this as the best pen in the world. And then finally, I used a pencil. Again, I'm not sure what the lead is, 
but this is from Colt Pens. It was a freebie. Colt Pens, and I know it's a pencil because it says this is a pencil. So I thought, you know, let's do some writing there. So on this 68 GSM Tomei River paper, you know, we can see that there's writing on the other side, not enough to really distract. Same here. So no real issues with it. Getting some nice sheen, getting some nice shimmer. So that's the control one that we've looked at. I'm going to fetch these out in reverse price order. So the most expensive first. The most expensive was this recycled A5 notebook. It cost me $1.50. That's Aussie dollars. So we're talking a real cheap notebook here. So again, we can see here with the Waterman Karen, not quite as dark as what we were seeing on the Tomai River paper. Just fetch this in. You can see there the Tomai River one, very dark. Whereas this, we can see more of that nice color to it. The Diamond Spiced Apple in the Twisby VAT 700R. Again, look at that. We're still seeing loads of that gorgeous gold colored sheen in there. Really pretty, loads coming through. With a Hongdian N7, again, looks very similar, it's fairly flat. And then that Pen BBS 323, again, very similar. Not really seeing much of that green sheen that I thought I was seeing on the Tomoe River paper. Drying wise, these all do seem to dry a little bit faster than what I was seeing on that Tomoe River paper. With the other pen that we've got, so here we've got the Bennu Talisman. Let me just fetch this down so we've got it right in the centre there. On here, I really am struggling to see any red sheen. Outline 200, you know, again, it's nice, performs well. The Big Byro, I actually preferred the way it felt when I was writing on here. I know it's not a video comparing the pens. I am planning one for the future, but... The Tomai River paper, it felt too smooth when I was writing. Then the pencil, I've got to be honest, I do think the pencil shows up a lot better. But that could be because this Tomai River paper is cream as opposed to white for this notebook. Looking through, first two pens, yeah, not too bad. Here, where we can see a little bit showing through, I did scribble on the other side, so I think we can ignore that. But when we look at the two bottom ones, now remember this was a fine and an extra fine. I'm actually starting to see some bleeding through there. Not enough to stop me from using both sides of the page. Let's take a look on the back of the other one. So again, with that Bennu Talisman, we're seeing hints coming through, but again, not enough that it would stop me from using both sides of the page. So for $1.50, I think that's actually quite good value. Uh, it's 140 pages and 70 GSM paper. So, yeah, really good value there. The next one we're going to look at is the draft book. This was the next most expensive one. It's 96 pages. Let me just, there we are. A4 graphic binder book. Just going to rearrange my desk ever so slightly because I can't seem to fit this all the way in. Hopefully that will help a little bit. Not sure how much though. Right, so let's take a look inside. This was expensive. 50 cents Australian. Dirt cheap. 96 pages. You know, look. All nicely gridded. I actually quite like gridded paper. I do think this grid, to me, I wouldn't like it to be as dark. If it was a little bit paler, it would be better. But doesn't really bother me. So with the Waterman Karen. Yeah, it writes nicely. You can see some shading coming through. See that nice colour. I do think it looks a little bit darker than what we were seeing on the recycled paper. Moving down to the Spiced Apple. Again, I'm seeing some of that sheen coming through. I'm not sure if it's coming over on the camera. Hopefully it is. Just trying to catch it. Certainly not as much as I was seeing on the Tomai River paper though. The Hondian N7, again, it's nice. It's a nice, bright, vibrant green. And same there with that Pen BBS 323. Again, nice brown colour. Still not seeing anything in the way of any sheen there. Now, oh, I've gone over two pages. 
My brain must have been going to sleep. But anyway, we've got the next ones here. So next we've got the Bennu Talisman, the Diamine Best Wishes. What can we see on this? So on there, unless it's coming over on the camera, not seeing anything there in the way of Sheen. The Outline 200, yep, looks quite nice. The Big Byro, again, yep, looks nice. Goes down quite well. Cult Pen's Pencil, again, shows up quite nice on this paper. Let's look at what the back of the papers are like. So we've got the Karen at the top here. We've got the Twisby, Hondian N7 and the Pen BBS 323. Yes, you can see through and see the writing on the other side. I think we've got a little bit here of bleeding through. You know, maybe a dot there. This is on the Hondian N7. Not maybe a little couple of bits here on the pen bbs 323 not a lot though again i'd be happy using both sides of the page here we've got the bennu you know yes we can see right in through there but nothing's bleeding through all the rest wouldn't expect to see too much that fine liner yeah see a little bit but with a biro and with a pencil absolutely fine as I said, we're going down in price. So the next price ones is this 64 page A4 binder book. Lined paper, 35 Aussie cents. And it's 64 pages. I like the way that the Waterman Karen's written. Again, I can still see little bits of shading, not a lot. So definitely, I don't think we're getting nowhere near as much character showing through, but it's still there. I think it's starting to dry quite a bit faster though. The spiced apple. Do you know, I'm still seeing some of that gold sheen coming through on there. That's quite nice, isn't it? The Honda N7, fairly flat ink. I'm expecting that. Same really with that pen BBS 323. Okay, not seeing really any sheen on either of those. Still looking nice. It's another one where do you know, my poor brain, when I was doing all these writing yesterday, must have been really out of it because I've skipped pages again. 35 cents for the whole book. Doesn't really matter, does it? Can we see any sheen here on the Bennu? Best wishes there, no. no. Again, fairly flat. And then the other three. You know, just for completeness, that's really why I put these in. You know, to show that it comes out all right. So the last notebook, this is the 9x7 exercise book. Now this is the 48 pages. There were other books with different page counts. This book, 15 Australian cents, 15 cents. You know, for school, if you're doing just a lot of note taking, I think this is dirt cheap. The Waterman Karen, again, seen a little bit of shading coming through. Not a lot, not expecting that. Dries fairly quick there, even after 30 seconds, it was dry. The spiced apple, how is that looking on here? I think there's still some gold sheen coming through. Not as much as I was seeing on the other ones, but it's still there. Hongdian in seven. And that pen BBS 323. You know, they both write nicely. Let's look at page two. Oh, that was actually page two there. I managed to not skip a page on this one. So here we've got the Bennu Talisman, yeah, that again, no sheen. Still slightly wet at 30 seconds though on this. Then here we've got the other inks. So we've got the outline, the biro and the pencil. If we look at what's come through, on this paper you can definitely see through. It's not enough that it would put me off from writing on both sides. So with the Karen, with a Twisby. Yeah, they're fine. When we come down to the other two, the N7 and the Pen BBS 323, again, we're actually getting more showing through. Now, I wonder if it's to do the inks, because the first two, they're diamine inks. These two are dominant industry inks. So that's something, maybe that's another video I might make, maybe quite a while in the future. I've got a load lined up at the moment. But 
Again though, it's not showing through enough that it would stop me using both sides. And with the Bennu, similar story, you know, we can see it getting some little bits of bleed through. I do think this of all of them is the wettest combination, but it's still usable both sides for me and it's 15 cents. So this was my purchases that I made from Kmart. Just try to get them all into camera. There we go. I just thought I'd say it's near the end of the school buying season. So these will all be getting bought up over the next few days, I'm guessing. But I thought I'd jump in. It's worth trying out cheaper notebooks. As long as you're not worried about shimmer and sheen, as long as you're not worried about too much in the way of shading, I think these are perfectly fine. And for most general note taking, they're perfect because, you know, 15 cents, you can't go wrong with that. I mean, 15 cents Aussie, I don't know what, but I would guess that would be less than 10 cents US. You know, dirt cheap. And it's certainly something... Next time I go to Kmart, if they've got any, I might buy a couple more of these just so I've got stocked up on them. So thank you for joining me for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. What's your experience with cheap notebooks? Do you use them? Have you experimented and found that you don't like them? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, Please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.